Welcome back. So helium is not just used for making balloons fly or making your voice go funny when you inhale it, but it's actually used widely from things like airbags to military equipment to, to even uh, rocket uh, propulsion. And it is in high demand. So despite being one of the most abundant elements in the universe, extractable helium is actually very hard to find. But a South African company has struck helium gold. Renogen discovered what might be one of the largest uh, helium deposits in the world, right here in the Free State. The company paid just 15 rand for mineral rights outside Virginia, which could end up being worth almost one and a half trillion rand. Can you imagine? Well, let's find out more from Steph Marani, the CEO of Renogen. Steph, you must be... A really happy guy lately, 15 rand for mineral rights, uh, probably the best money you've ever spent. Why was it so cheap? Let's start there. Um, so the, the asset at the time, there was, there was no indication that there was any helium in it. And the, we, were, we were after the natural gas or the methane contained in it. There were literally four holes in the ground. These four holes were producing some methane. Our intention was to produce a little bit of power from these four holes. And, um, and by, by pure sheer coincidence, after we ended up buying the asset for, for a dollar, but more importantly, we also took over all of its liabilities. So it was, it was unfortunately a little bit more expensive than a dollar, but, um, but we took over the liabilities of the company. And then when we tested the gas, realized that there was helium in it. And then from there, it, uh, it, uh, it kind of took on a life of its own. Yeah, very exciting. How do you work out the value of your find, though, at this point? So I, I need to temper I, I, that, that one and a half trillion rand number. Um, that, was, that was a theoretical question posed to me as to if we had to look at our total prospective resources, um, what would the value be on surface? And an, an, easy, an easy rule of thumb was that there was a recent auction by the United States government on helium. Uh, that was in 2018. That had a value of about $285 per thousand cubic feet. And then if you just apply that to the total cumulative prospective resources sitting underground, that ends up at $100 billion. But, uh, I mean, I, I can tell everyone hand on heart, there isn't $100 billion worth of helium underground. That's, uh, that's purely a theoretical number. Um, but, but still, the, the reserves are meaningful. And, uh, and it is by far and away the highest concentration of helium on the planet, bar none. Yeah, that is, that is impressive and astronomical, num astronomical numbers nonetheless. Uh, Steph, who are you talking to? I know that the media is going to be scrambling to talk to you, but you're going to have lots of business calls as well. Uh, look, um, so at the moment there, there are a number of calls. We're, yeah, we're busy going through the motions of finalizing our phase two studies and, and updating the full, the full extent of exactly what's sitting underground. But, um, but obviously an incredibly busy week also because along with our partners Argonon we launched we launched a, a helium token um, backed by a blockchain alongside Purple um, their their division Easy Crypto so another exciting development actually allowing people to, to, to participate in helium as a commodity um, so that's that's kept us incredibly busy this week and uh, and um, th that's that's an innovative development in terms of assisting junior miners in terms of how they finance themselves moving forward. So I'd, um, I'd, I'd say watch this space. I think, uh, I think this mechanism is going to allow a lot more junior mining in South Africa, which is desperately needed. Yeah, I, I can imagine that you're going to see a lot of investors doing all sorts of research now into helium and the prospects of it. Uh, but also there's the opportunity that is sitting here to possibly create jobs uh, for that area in the future, right? So yes, the, the one thing the one thing that we've got to be careful of is that um, energy energy plays on the breadbasket in terms of creating the jobs. They are the catalyst that creates the jobs. So what will happen is that by virtue of the fact that we're bringing on a plant, which you know, to date we've probably you know, by the end of this year we'll probably be on about a hundred people that we've employed. With phase two, we'll probably hopefully double that over the course of two to three years. But the most important thing is that our operation in the free state is offering clean, alternative and sustainable and reliable energy. And that in and of itself is a catalyst to be able to creating 
a, a, a new hub. And you know, where our vision for, for that area is for Renogen to serve as a, as a catalyst right. to be able to develop business in that area and attract manufacturing to the area. Yeah, but that's people being able to put food on the table. So all the best moving forward. Stefan, thank you so much for speaking to us.